Bronsted Lowry acids and bases. According to the definition, a Bronsted Lowry acid is a hydrogen ion donor, an H plus ion. Since a hydrogen atom consists of a single proton in the nucleus and a single electron, when you ionize it by removing the electron, you get a proton. So, we say H plus is a proton. In the same terms, a Bronsted Lowry base is a hydrogen ion acceptor, a proton acceptor. Let's look at a characteristic proton transfer reaction. In this case, we're going to let our acid be acetic acid, shown here, and our base is going to be methylamine, CH3NH2. Incidentally, if you're a Breaking Bad fan, methylamine is how Walt and Jesse put the meth in methamphetamine. Now, we say this is a proton transfer reaction, and the Bronsted-Lowry definition is proton-centric, but what's really happening is movement of electrons. The lone pair on the base is where the action starts. And we have a curved arrow that looks like this. We call that curved arrow number one. And then the second curved arrow looks like this. Let's call that curved arrow number two. So, curved arrow number one forms a bond from the base to the proton. Curved arrow number two breaks the bond between the acid and the proton. On the right side of the reaction, we're showing the products. This is acetate. It is the conjugate base of acetic acid. Right, so the acetic acid minus a proton gives you the conjugate base acetate. This compound over here is methyl ammonium. It's what happens when you add a proton to the methylamine. Therefore, it is the conjugate acid of the methylamine. So even though this is a proton transfer reaction, really what we've got is electron density flowing from the base to the acid to make the conjugate base and the conjugate acid. Acid strength is measured as a tendency of the acid to donate its proton to water. So, for an acid, when it's put in water, if it's a strong acid, water will attack its proton, and then this bond will break and turn into a lone pair, and you end up with hydronium, which is the conjugate acid of water, and whatever this anion is, which is the conjugate base of your acid. And so, the equilibrium constant for this reaction is Ka, and that's going to be equal to the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of the anion over the concentration of unionized acid. And we're leaving the water out because we're doing this in water. Right, so water is the solvent. pKa is just the negative base 10 logarithm of the Ka. So, if you have a Ka that's a large number, then that's a really strong acid. Right, so Ka greater than 1, that's very strong. And Ka that's a lot less than 1, that's considered weak. Or in other words, the, the larger K is, the stronger the acid is. With pKa, since it's the negative log, the more negative pKa is, the stronger the acid is.
For example, when you take acetic acid, whose condensed formula is CH3COOH, and you put it in water, you get hydronium and acetate. And the Ka value is equal to the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of acetate over the concentration of unionized acetic acid. And that's equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth power. The pKa is the negative base 10 logarithm of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, which equals 4.74. In other words, acetic acid isn't particularly strong. On the other hand, sulfuric acid H2SO4 has a pKa of negative 9. That's really strong. Hydroiodic acid has a pKa of negative 11. Trifluoromethane sulfonic acid has a pKa of negative 13. So hydroiodic acid is 100 times stronger than sulfuric acid, and trifluoromethane sulfonic acid, or triflic acid, is 100 times stronger than hydroiodic acid. Triflic acid is so strong, it's what's called a superacid. You can use a pKa value to choose a reagent for a proton transfer reaction. For example, what if we wanted to make propane thiol from propane thiolate? Can we use ethanol as an acid? Let's have a look. First, we write out the chemical reaction. So here is our ethanol, and here is our sodium propane thiolate. And if we do a protein a propane transfer reaction or a proton transfer reaction, we'll get sodium ethoxide. So here's the ethoxide ion and the sodium ion. And our other product would be propane thiol. Now, will this work? We need to know the pKa of the two acids. The pKa of ethanol is 16. The pKa of propane thiol is 10.2. The equilibrium constant is equal to the concentrations of products over the concentrations of reactants. So we'll have the concentration of ethoxide times the concentration of propane thiol and we won't bother with the sodium because it's both it's on both sides of the reaction on the bottom, we'll have the concentrations of reactants. So ethanol, CH3, CH2O, H, and propane thiolate, CH3, CH2, CH2, S minus. Now, if the value of KEQ is greater than 1, then this reaction happens, and if it's less than 1, then the reaction doesn't happen to any great extent. Now, the Ka for ethanol is just the equilibrium expression when ethanol donates a proton to water. So Ka on the left-hand side of this equation is equal to the concentration of ethoxide, times the concentration of hydronium over the concentration of unionized 
ethanol. And the Ka for the right-hand side of this equation is the Ka for the um, propane thiolate donating its proton to water. So we'll have the concentration of propane thiolate, CH3, CH2, CH2, S minus, times the concentration of hydronium, H3O plus, over the concentration of unionized propane thiol, HSCH2, CH2, CH3. Now look. This shows up in the denominator of our KEQ equation. This shows up in the numerator. And this goes numerator to numerator, and this goes denominator to denominator. What that says is, if we take the Ka from the left-hand side, and we divide it by the Ka on the right-hand side, well, that's the same as multiplying the Ka on the left by the reciprocal of the Ka on the right. Look what happens. The hydroniums cancel, and that quotient gives you KEQ. So KEQ equals the KA on the left over the KA on the right. KA is just 10 to the negative pKa. So this is equal to 10 to the negative pKa on the left over 10 to the negative pKa on the right. And in terms of powers of 10, we end up with 10 to the pKa on the right minus the pKa on the left. Going back to our original chemical equation with the pKa on the left-hand side of 16 and a pKa on the right of 10.2, we get that KEQ equals 10 to the 10.2 minus 16, which gives us 1.58 times 10 to the negative sixth, which is less than 1, which means the answer is no, Ethanol is not a strong enough acid to protonate the propane thiolate. Here's an exercise for you to try. Can sodium amide be used to deprotonate propine, given that the pKa of ammonia, which is the conjugate acid of amide, is 38 and the pKa of propine is 25. Pause and work it. So our first step in working this out is to write the reaction. So our acid is going to be the propine, CH3 to C, triple bond, to CH. And our base is going to be sodium amide, that's a sodium cation, and an NH2 minus amide anion. So the proton transfer is going to look like that. And we'll end up with propionide ion, sodium propionide, CH3C triple bond minus with the Na plus, right? That's your sodium propionide and ammonia. Now we write in our pKa values. We got 25 and 38. 
and then remember the formula we just derived for KEQ? That's 10 to the pKa on the right-hand side minus the pKa on the left-hand side, which gives us 10 to the 38 minus 25, or 10 to the 13th power, which is greater than 1. So the answer is yes.